Good morning from ABC 13. I'm Tom Cook. And I'm Samika Knight. Here's the very latest news. Houston police arrested two people when they busted a flash mob car show on the south side overnight. ABC 13 reporter Courtney Fisher live at South Main and Hiram Clark with the very latest. And this is an exclusive here, Courtney. Yeah, that's right. Samika, it was actually four people that were arrested. Police say that the drivers were going the wrong way down this part of the Main Street feeder. Take a look. This man in the back of that HPD car and three others were arrested. Police had been watching for them. A sergeant tells us HPD was recently tipped off. Racing had been going on in this area. It's the latest example of a bigger problem. Earlier this month, we showed you this video. Drivers doing crazy stunts, posting it on social media. After that video surfaced, police put out a message that they were looking for flash mob crews like this one. The group this morning, possibly one of those crews, police not saying if they were connected to that video we showed you from earlier this month, they are investigating. For now, reporting in Southwest Houston, Courtney Fisher, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Courtney. Breaking news from Southeast Houston. Take a look. You look at that surveillance video of thieves smashing their way into a Valero gas station on MLK and Bell Arbor. Moments later, the clerk started shooting. This happened around 2.15 this morning. One thief rammed that stolen truck into the store. Four others were around the side of the building. The clerk ran from the back and opened fire. The thieves ran off. It's not clear if the clerk hit anyone. There was a bullet hole in that truck. Customers were inside at the time, and police say it's amazing no one was hurt. All right, a man now facing charges for taking an officer's taser and trying to use it on another officer in, in Aransas Pass. Police posted this video from Wednesday showing Jesse Rose charging at an officer in the jail's booking area. He takes her taser and then fires it at another officer unsuccessfully. Rose then ran down the hall where officers tackled him. He ended up biting one of the officers, but they finally got him under control, and he's now been charged with assault. Katie High School is celebrating this morning. It's a big win against defending state champions North Shore overnight. The hashtag Katie started trending on Twitter. This map shows just how many people were talking about that team overnight. ABC 13 reporter, excuse me, Jeff Feeling live with the big upset. Jeff, this is a big one. It certainly is, Samika, and they're going to be talking about this one here in Katy for quite some time. Remember last year, North Shore beat Katy twice. Well, that's not happening this year. But here in Houston, we are underway under the Thursday night lights. The game was seen on ESPNU, so the whole country got a chance to see the best high school football teams in the state. Number one ranked North Shore dominating the first half. The Mustangs got out to a big lead, going into the locker room up 21-7. to But Katie found a way to crawl back, getting a touchdown on their first second half possession. And then they get the onside kick, adding three more points, and all of a sudden we had a ball game. The Tiger defense kept North Shore from scoring in the second half half and with under five minutes to go, Katie scored the go ahead touchdown on a drive that saw a pair of fourth down conversions. Katie head coach Gary Joseph told Vipe Houston all about his halftime pep talk. Confidence and uh, reassured them that we were going to be okay with anything else. You know, you, you sit there and play against people like that and all of a sudden it, it's coming at you so hard and so fast and you know, you start panicking. No panicking now. The Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office wasting no time showing their Tiger pride on Twitter, asking if number two just beat number one. You know it sure did. And again, KD lost a couple of games to North Shore last year, including in the state playoffs. And some people were saying, well, you know, maybe KD's reign on top of the football heap was coming to an end. Well, they ain't saying it now. In Katie, Jeff Ealing, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. All right there, Jeff. Well, a crowd erupted in cheers down in Eleanor Tinsley Park for a fireworks display celebrating love. Take a look. A man popped the question to his love along Buffalo Bayou. He went all out, setting up a huge display of lights that read, Marry Me. ABC 13 viewer Jacqueline Lechuga says she doesn't know the couple, but she was certainly moved to tears by the display of love. Oh, oh I know. That's cool. That. All right, let's check out your weather forecast, Alita. 
All right, celebrating love this weekend or Labor Day. We've got a few cooling downpours this afternoon with lesser chances for the Labor Day holiday. Weekend heat is what we're going to be talking about. Here's a look at future track. Not a whole lot of color on the map, but we may see a few showers down along the coastline that may turn into a few widely scattered downpours this afternoon. Labor Day weekend starts off nice and dry. Meanwhile, as we get into early next week, we're going to be monitoring a lot of moisture here in the Gulf of Mexico, but most, most of that moisture stay south of the Houston area. The best chance of seeing that rain will be along the immediate coastline sometime Tuesday and Wednesday of the upcoming week. Meanwhile, all eyes on Dorian. The latest forecast models now have it intensifying to a major hurricane within the next 24 hours. Already at 110 miles per hour, 111 for it to be a major hurricane or a cap three. It is still expected to make landfall somewhere along the coastline of Florida right now, really focused around central Florida. Florida between Miami and up toward uh, the Melbourne area as a category four hurricane, meaning that wind speeds could be right around 140 miles per hour. The latest forecast models are showing widespread six to 12 inches, isolated amounts up to 15 inches. That tropical wave in the Gulf next week could send some heavy rain across South Texas. Meanwhile, for us, those rain shower chances only at 20%. And then once that tropical wave pushes westward, it's going to be all about the heat and dry conditions as temperatures get close to the century mark. Home tips on ABC13.com are sponsored by the licensed professionals at Rude Air Conditioning and Heating. From tips to efficiently cool your home to tips to keep your systems in working order, look to Rude and its licensed contractors in Houston. Learn more on ABC13.com slash home tips today. And as we approach the three day holiday weekend, you won't see many tech stop projects out there. They give construction crews and drivers a break to accommodate the holiday travel and traffic and the metro schedule on Monday will be different. Buses will run on a Sunday schedule on Labor Day as well as the metro rail. No park and ride. Hopefully you won't need it. All HOV and hot lanes are closed. We should all fit on the main lanes. All right, and happy Friday to you. We're celebrating with freebies happening in and around the Houston area. You can test your Harry Potter trivia to a free movie screening in Montgomery and a free class for your child in Sugarland. Head back to Hogwarts next Thursday and test your wizard knowledge at the Growler USA in Katie at Harry Potter Trivia Night. You will need to make reservations online and the event starts seating at 6.30 p.m. Over on the north side, catch a free screening of the hit film Karate Kid at the Montgomery Community Center Lawn tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. And get your child's problem solving skills working at an early age with a free trial class with Tinker Garden at the Oyster Creek Park in Sugarland. This expert design class will help children learn to communicate and create together and shares insight into your child's development. The class is designed for children 18 months to five years of age and will take place Wednesday at 10 a.m. Registration is required. All right, guys, and you have through tomorrow to score discounted tickets to the Texas Renaissance Festival. Yeah. Daily tickets for the first two weekends in October cost just $13.17. Daily general admission for any day of the festival will cost you $19.17. Yes, that price commemorates the festival start in 1974. The festival opens October 5th and runs each weekend until December 1st. It's on FM 1774 in Todd Mission in Grimes County. Is that what you're supposed to say? Huzzah. We're Huzzah. only Huzzah. talking about the Renaissance Festival. Yeah. I know. Yes. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Turkey legs. Woo. Ooh. Fried right. food. I don't think about the food, right? Mm. Happy Delicious. Halloween. <laughs> That's ABC 13 for this morning. Have, Have a great Friday, day. <laughs>